I'm absolutely thrilled to be here with um, Fargal Keane this evening and I suppose you know you'd be no stranger to so many many people and and your work um, you know as an international correspondent but I suppose what interests me particularly is um, Fergal Keane the man and how important that is in relation to everything that you're doing. I don't think we can separate ourselves from our work nor should we um, at the same time it's important not to let my own prejudice and my own feeling overwhelm my reason um, and so I see very much my role is to be fully human um, but not to the detriment of rationality okay, there's too much of that in, in, uh, in public discourse in, in the media generally these days yeah I mean that's so interesting and I suppose it's a sense right through your books as well as I've read you know that tremendous sense of humanity and, and really would this be true in wanting to tell the human story of people? Yes. Um, you've got to keep remembering that behind every crisis and behind every huge mass of people that you are shown, there are human beings, fundamentally, and uh, each with their individual story. And when we get into the business of stereotyping people as groups or masses, whether it's Muslim, Jewish, um, African, and seeing people in a simplistic way, we di don't just diminish themselves, we, we diminish our us. Absolutely. And I suppose, again, that runs right through. I mean, I've looked at, you know, from your documentaries of Taking a Stand, and I was particularly touched by, um, you know, A Season of Blood, The Rwandan Journey, and your stories there and your encounters there. And, and how does that impact on you as a person? Um, I suppose the first thing I should say is I'm really glad that book is still selling. Yes. It's still being, it's still, you know, um, twenty plus years after it was first published, it's, mm. uh, it's, it's still out there, and um, so I'm encouraged. I mean, one of the things that keeps you going is being encouraged by the fact that people still want to know and still care, yes. and it's still being taught to students. Yes. Um, how does it touch you as a human being? Um, it wears you out. It's something that never goes away, but you learn to live with it. Yeah. If there's no other choice. Yeah. I mean, I know from talking um, to other uh, conflict correspondents and, you know, that whole sense of what is in your face of the atrocities of what mankind do, does to mankind. And, you know, what is the sense of that? I mean, the message that you as a journalist, as an amazing international journalist, but as somebody that brings it right back into the local, I suppose, human condition of people, where do you recon reconcile that? You don't. Okay. Simply, you, you just, I, I can never reconcile the barbarism of genocide, yeah. um, except to say that perhaps the hardest thing about it is that it's not done by monsters, it's done by people like you and me, sure. who happen to find themselves in a situation where they are frightened, Yes. Um, and who are poisoned by the words of powerful men. Yes. and told that if they just get rid of one community that will change everything and make everything perfect yeah. and it's nonsense yeah. it's the, mo the most pernicious and evil lie of any time and you, I mean, you talk about that dark valley that we're in at the moment and I suppose that whole sense of um, you know the ideas the words the reasoned conversations conscious conversations as we may term it um, in respect of and the, the work you're doing I mean where where do you see that 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 being part of, of, of a solution because you've talked about we're not looking for simplistic solutions mm. I think it's a little part of a huge conversation yes um, <coughs> Or maybe it's, it's one conversation among many, many millions of conversations, which are essential. Yeah. Um, I keep coming back to this reason and yes. fairness yes. and kindness. Yes. And there's precious little of that in so much public debate these days. Sure, sure. Uh, if you look in, the, in this country, for example, around the water protest, the way in which that became so polarised and so angry is something we need to examine. Uh, you see the same thing around issues like refugees. Yes. On a completely different political spectrum, but this the we go from um, you know an objection to rage so quickly. Yes. Now rage is you know, yes there are things that are people are entitled to be angry about, mm. 
But that anger needs to be controlled. Yes. And it needs to be funneled in ways that are not destructive to other people. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and that don't inspire fear. Absolutely. And that are not intimidatory. Yes. And um, if you look at what's happening in America, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking specifically in relation to America here. Yes. Um, and the, the Trump phenomenon mm. and the xenophobia that mm. it inspires, mm. the way in which it brings racism mm. into the mainstream. Mm. Mm. Um, that's an example of where this stuff can really go. Yeah. When you throw reason out the window. When you throw reason out the window. And, and you throw out the obligation to be civil. Yes. And I believe there is an obligation to be civil. Yes. To yes. each other. You know, I, mean, I suppose that's such the, an interesting thing, uh, Fergal, about your work as well. Telling that human story and bringing back to the hum, you know, to that very individual story. And I suppose I'm recalling um, through the, um, the Rwandan journey and the genocide, um, that young girl, Valentina, mm. That I read about, and 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 you know how you had followed her life and her journey, and how important is it um, to do that in the yes. face of, of uh, such atrocity? Uh, it's very important um, in journalistic terms to have continuity yeah. and to not just flit in and out of people's lives, to see them as a kind of commodity, yes. a soundbite, yeah. to go back to them again and again, and um, and recognise that they're not they're not just an instant. Yes. Yes. That there are a continuum. Okay. And that there is a progress. Mm -hmm. And if you look at her life, you saw someone who worked mm -hmm. incredibly hard mm -hmm. for change. Mm -hmm. uh, who went from being this child that we saw brutalised in a, a corpse-strewn landscape mm -hmm. um, to being a successful mother herself in America now. Yes. And that's great. And, you know, that kind of thing does well, absolutely. cheer you up. Absolutely. Well, it certainly does, and I suppose it takes it again. I think your work puts very much a human face on things, and I think for any solutions, if we're looking for what, where we're going forward, the, the value and the importance of that is, is so amazing. And I know also you have you're huge concern about the environment, and mm. it, it's just something as well that I think you, you know, you've spoken about and you've written that you, you say that we need to move beyond slogans, we need to, to move beyond easy headlines, mm. as you've termed it. Mm. Um, you know, where are we going in relation to that? I, think, I mean, if you look at the attitude to the environment that existed in this country, say, 30 years ago, I think we've come a long way. Sure. There's a hell of an amount of awareness. Mm. There's a much greater... I mean, one of the, the revolutions that's happened in Ireland is the notion that the countryside exists outside of the three months of the summer. You know, that you can actually go out, go out into it. People walk, they climb, they fish, yeah. they swim even in yes. winter. And all of that, anything that brings you out into the, um, into the natural world is hugely valuable. I mean, one of the things I just love doing is wandering around the cliff head in Ardmore yes. and looking at birds and taking my time. Yes. And... Uh, we're, yeah, we are, we're more aware, we're, and we learn all the time. If you look at the kind of hideous building um, work that went on in many of our coastal areas, it shouldn't have happened, it sure. did happen, but I do think it's given us pause for thought. Uh, yeah. you, you hope that we won't have another boom, building boom that throws up these appalling concrete monstrosities and beautiful parts of the coastline. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And I suppose we're looking, I mean, you mentioned again tonight about, you know, needing vision as we go forward. Needing, I suppose I was thinking about it in the terms of leadership and visionary leadership mm. in respect of that. And where are we, do you think? I mean, you, you have a, a world view, your work has a, a, a world view and bringing it back. Where, where are we in relation to that? I think stop looking for heroes in politics. Recognise that they're ordinary men and women operating under sometimes ferocious constraints. Yes. I'm talking about Western democratic yes, societies. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I acknowledge that they're trying to do their best, most of them. They're not all a venal, corrupt bunch of shysters. Sure. Um, and also stop imagining that Everything that goes wrong or everything that goes well is going to be their responsibility. Mm. It's not. Mm. The great lesson of the last 30, 40 years to me has been the rise of civil society. The belief that citizens themselves can change things and get engaged and become activists. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, I it mean, just must t take place within c what I call civilised frameworks. Yes. Okay. Which aren't about violence and intimidation. Sure. And are compassionate. Yeah. 
in, you know, compassionate in respect of that understanding of difference mm. and respecting of difference. And I mean, that equally comes across in what you're doing and what you've been saying, what I see you doing. But I suppose the whole sense of where we're going forward and moving into solutions. And I suppose a question maybe. We talk about rage and rage and the negative of rage and the violence that comes through it and can potentially the destructiveness. But do you think we've lost outrage? No. I think there's plenty uh, of the ecstasy of righteousness. Okay. <laughs> Fair <laughs> Too enough. Too much of it. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this, mind you, if you look at what happened in this country um, during the boom and then the age of austerity, you'd be worn out from outrage because there was so much to be outraged about. Yes. But I think people have, people have moved beyond the, the, the point of outrage. It has to be channeled um, and not into cynicism and not into a belief that they're all, as I said, just a, a venal shower of wasters. Um, yeah. Yeah. So people dis Disciplined activism. And, and, yeah. and which has happened. You know, I th yeah. it is happening. Yes. You see it all over the country in different areas. The environment is one area you're talking yes, about but yes. holding them to account about public spending and all of these things all, all of those they're things all, together uh, and austerity and all of that they're all part of that absolutely do you, do you think you know I mean we're at a certain time in, in the world as well and I suppose in Ireland as well where you know we think about back to 916 I know you've documented that and written about it extensively and you know taken the human face again of that and I, you know, I think was it Yeats that wrote about you know a, a, ter a terrible beauty is born you know in respect of that time and do, do you see that opportunity again do, do you see that we now have that chance again um, I wouldn't want to go back to that I wouldn't want to go back to the idea of violent revolution as a panacea yeah it is it had its uh, it was part of a particular time and place part of a world and European uh, circumstance as well um, I think that we might usefully, you know, put our energies into the more mundane business of everyday politics, citizens' politics, and that's what I keep talking about: this activism. Okay. Um, rather than imagining there will be some dramatic moment, pivotal moment that changes everything. Okay. That's a child's fantasy. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And, uh, so, and so as Yeats also said, the heart bred on fantasy grown brutal from the fair. From the fair, indeed. So we're talking about an active citizenship yeah. and that's where we see it in each individual and the importance of education uh, where we take that in. in. In respect of a new kind of education, mm. do you see that? Do you see that importance I think it's going well. Um, you know, I can only go on the basis of visits that I make to schools in yeah. this country, but if I compare it to the country that I grew up in, children are far more open, they're encouraged to question far more and um, there's a much more relaxed atmosphere between teacher and pupil mm. that I've seen I can only go on the basis of a limited mm. number of, of school visits here but it's, it's mm. certainly far healthy okay listen it's been absolute pleasure and I mean we could go on and on forever um, I mean for me who's been a fan of your work for a very long time it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you Fergal this evening and I know you have a new book coming out and you mentioned that this evening would you just like to mention about that yeah the book is called uh, Wounds and it's a book about <coughs> the war of independence and the civil war in North Kerry and my own family's role in that. <coughs> and it's about how we deal with the tough truths of the past. And it's a book that's set in North Kerry, but it has relevance to wars everywhere and to how people deal with past, the terrible things that happened in the past. Fantastic. I mean, it's so much about identity um, and uh, so much for us <coughs> to think about. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. And here in this in Rama Festival, and um, a standing ovation for um, Fergal Keane this evening and all of that, the seeds that he has sown that people have gone home with and so much food for thought. Um, uh, and this is Bernadette Phillips uh, for Community Radio, you all. Thank you so much. Thank you.